Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to D and D Beyond. I have a, a motley crew joining me. Uh, I'm I'm very excited about this chaos. You know how sometimes you're like, uh, you know, you're like, oh, what if we did this? But we don't really have enough time to put it together. But wait, I'm in charge, and I can just be like, Amy, put this together immediately. It's a delightful idea. Uh, I. <laughs> I have this amazing group today. Today we are going to be fighting some Spelljammer monsters from the Monstrous Compendium, Volume 1, which is available for free right now. My cat is very excited for free right now. The Monstrous Compendium, Volume 1, for all D&D Beyond users, so go check it out right this second. Uh, but we are also here uh, to spread the good word about Jasper's Game Week, uh, which is being mm -hmm. hosted the week of May the 9th here on D&D Beyond's Twitch channel. Right now, there are auctions open uh, to bid on seats to play with a variety of just really, really cool people, some of whom are even in this virtual room <laughs> today. Uh, Jasper's Game Week is the annual big charity event of Jasper's Game Day, which is all about suicide prevention and mental health awareness. It's a big deal to us. So we're, we're, we're asking you to, to jump in, participate. I'm so excited to have you all here to, uh, to just throw you at a monster from the Monsters Compendium. I've told none of you what we're doing. I've told none of you what our setting is. I've just asked you to trust me and go with it and have fun. And that said, let's go. I have no business being in a DM chair for any of you, but let's do this. A year hunting him, a year of sacrifice, battle, struggle, strife, and turmoil. And yet here in the sands of Arnok, where it all began, this brave group of adventurers, this found family in every sense, stands across from their greatest enemy one final time. Because either he dies or you die. Behold, Narlak, the Knoll Mummy Lord, the Knoll who is also a Lord of Mummies and the architect of your every woe. Now I will ask to, you to please introduce your characters and have your incredible pose slash final moment with Narlak before this, your last battle with your nemesis. Alicia, we will start with you. With me, okay, I am playing. Pascal. She is, uh, her name is Pascal Lachance. She is a goblin paladin. And basically, I mean, she's, she's over this, but she is this tiny green goblin, huge ears dangling from her ears are these jewels, like these rhinestone jewels. She's wearing a very elaborately decorated rhinestone cat suit. And she's wearing a very expensive looking set of Edmontine plate armor that has been fully bedazzled by hand. She has a very large sword, a huge shield, and the shield actually bears an elvish coat of arms because she was adopted and raised by an elvish family. And she sort of steps up and is like, Narlak, you have disparaged. My gown company, gobsmacked gowns on social media for the last time. You've destroyed my business. Now I take care of you. Narlak says the only engagement you get will be your death. Todd, introduce us to your character. I am floppy bisk bisk, shattered kai sorcerer. I am bald. I have tattoos that go up the neck and into my face. He is in a black robe uh, that goes all the way to the floor, but it has that if you kind of tilt it like those cars and it's sort of purple, um, mostly black, but then it sort of shimmers and shines. And uh, I, I stand here before him with uh, bluish energy crackling at my fingertips. And I point at Narlag and I say, <clears throat> I want my $2. The hiss is seething in rage at this, uh, this, uh, this debt that has haunted him across, uh, across his multiple thwarted master plans. KP, you introduce us to your character. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's probably not like two separate dollars. It's one of those original $2 bills that you don't get anymore. <laughs> that's that's that you that's use for a horse racing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, I picked I the wrong... papers to Narlac. 
Uh, I picked the wrong character. I, I picked the most sweetest of characters for this, and it's like a revenge story? Okay. All right. We'll figure this out. <laughs> Hello. I play Shuri, my sweet changeling bard who is on a quest to find her family that was lost and got chucked across the various planes. So she's hopping from plane to plane and met these wonderful travelers who are willing to help her out. Uh, and you see this blue-skinned, young-looking bard wearing uh, her hair is silver and swooped to the side, shade on this end. Uh, she's wearing a very ornate bard attire, like the old-school medieval-style bard attire. And on her back, on all of her, you see almost like a backpack, but it's not really a backpack. Instead, it's like a drum kit. In her hand is a ukulele. You see strings coming from the backpack attached to her leg. She's like one of those one-man bands that go around and just like <laughs> does all this and then like plays everything. She can do it all, baby. Uh, and she looks at Narlak and she goes, oh, can I just have my flute back, please? I really need it. I just really and need that flute. And there, as the sun uh, passes perfectly as it's setting right behind our, like, uh, casting the Knoll Mummy Lord in silhouette, you see him spinning like uh, like Iceman's pen in Top Gun, a single flute. Eliza, will you please introduce your character? I am Varen, a six-foot-tall gem dragonborn fighter with um, very intricate-looking and well-used, well-worn full plate armor. Um, she is wearing a uh, shoulder armor that juts out like sharply here. It has a very like strong 80s businesswoman vibe to it in its shape and power. Um, and she is very stoic and very direct. And so she squares off her shoulder with her hand axe and one arm and her long sword in the other and says, Norlak, the time is nigh. Your inevitable doom is here. She points the long sword at, at them. Narlak hisses hatefully as, uh, as the, the, the personal drive behind Narlak, uh, part of which has been just pure jealousy uh, of those shoulder pads, uh, something that a mummy by definition mm -hmm. uh, can't have. Can't pull off. You can't pull that uh, cannot, off. Cannot. Mummy. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, do you know anything about mummies? That's the one thing everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Amy Dallin, please introduce your character. Hello. Yes. And finally, rounding out this group is Neris Copperkettle. Uh, I am. I'm a halfling. I set out a long time ago. Was sent out by my cartographers guild, and I thought I would heal things and see the universe and write it all down and. Those memories are still there, but what you see now is that uh, shock of red hair under a jaunty hat, um, and what was that, that hopeful facade has now picked up scars and patches and some burn damage that hasn't quite been repaired uh, on the left side. The feather's about halfway still there, um, but she looks ever more determined as she stares Narlak in the face and says, I set out to see the world and map it. But what I've learned is there are things what should be wiped off that map. Ooh. And it is oh. on that perfect cue that Narlak begins to monologue. You fools up there oppose the power of both the gnome <laughs> and the mummy. Stop your yawning. I will grind your bones until they are but dust dancing upon the very dunes you fall upon. I shall make melodies of your final moments and harmonize them with the anguish cries of your loved ones. I shall, what the fuck? And a beam of light strikes Narlak and he vanishes before your very eyes. Where did he go? That was easy. I want my two dollars. Was that part of the plan? I think no, he just ran it. for his life. My flute. And as well, that this, was easy. As this puzzlement, as this weird feeling uh, uh, falls upon the party, that same beam overtakes all of you, and suddenly you find yourselves in what appears to be a massive, bleak cathedral. Although it's unlike any that you've ever seen, you have only a moment to consider your surroundings before you take note of your host. He is both skeletal and serpentine, and regards the party passively 
as a tentacle protruding from his chest holds an impaled narlac in place, as a monstrous and unfathomable calamity of teeth protrude from its torso to feed from the knoll mummy lord. Narlac falls dead to the ground, and the creature regards your group as a dread whisper fills your mind. Only the strong will survive to become one with my legions. I don't That's like that. Not what we came here for. English uh, Rococo house design is so 2001. With that, <laughs> it takes a step forward from this bizarre. Oh. Uh, strange alien looking um, uh, organ that it was standing in front of, which I don't know, probably looks a little like the piano from uh, from uh, Star Wars that the jizz band plays. And I need all of you to roll for initiative. Dun -dun. We all know why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did I roll? Oh, what? Don't ask us. Did I was... <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Hey, well, it's minus pain. one. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pain. It's just pain. 19. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we didn't do All too right. bad, most of us. Yeah. With that bonus, uh, Ploppy, uh, you will be kicking us off. I'm just going to. Uh... <laughs> It's okay. It'll go sixty feet. I'm gonna throw. A, I'm gonna throw a wall of water at it to try and uh, to knock it off its feet, so that then my um, my uh, my brethren can have at. So uh, mm. I just I just throw my head back like this, and then seemingly out of my really fashionable cloak, uh, <laughs> a, a large wall of water just erupts. And then just 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 rushes at him, sort of the hallway in Titanic, uh, filling the filling the void between me. You all all y'all's ears pop because of the change of the air pressure, and this wall of water uh, goes rushing at uh, at the guy. Amazing. So to paint a picture for you, uh, you you. The, the, your group is sort of in the center aisle of what is is very much a cathedral. You know, there's there's rows of pews and about uh, he is about 40 feet ahead of you in front of a slightly raised stage. So just this like shocking wall of water uh, heads to hit him. Uh, 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 Todd, uh, are we rolling an attack? Are we rolling to save? How does this one work for us? That would be, you know, it's 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 just that. So uh, it, uh, let's see here. Uh, um. I'm going to say he's going to have to do a, a, a con save against uh, or a deck save, whichever he's worse at. OK, a con save or a deck save. And um, uh, because it's because... as if I dropped him out of a very high plane <laughs> into the ocean, but the ocean's Absolutely. coming at him. We'll go. We'll go con save. Uh, yeah, because he's will... not going to be able to duck out of the way of this thing. So let's go. Con <laughs> right. Save. Yeah. Yeah, and like going what? like a ninja doesn't seem to be this 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 person's vibe. So and let's I'm do that. It does fifteen d eight damage. <laughs> Amazing. So no, that save that save was a twenty two. Uh, against uh, what would that be? Let's see. Yeah, good good call, right? Uh, so that would probably be against a fourteen. So yeah, he beats that. Um. Mm -hmm. But so then he'll do half damage, but I'm not I'm not sure how you want to clock the damage on this puppy. Hmm. Because uh, it doesn't does it... really it's 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 more of a it's an area effect, but I'm using it as a weapon. I threw the ocean That's at fair. The that no <laughs> that is uh completely fair. Uh let's call it stump um the DM stump the DM. Let's uh <laughs> let... I'm just sort of like modeling it after like a third level projectile spell. Let's do um, let's do like a like a like a two d six. Does that sound good to you? Um, I'd like a three d six, but you know what? I'll go for a two d six. We'll roll that right now. So that does a uh, well, it does half damage because he saved. So he'll. Oh well, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I did save. I'll give you the three d six. Okay, so uh, so that was twelve. And uh, with an additional, oh, good lord! I critted on all three of those, so that was six, six, six. Ooh, yes, 
So Lucky. You know, uh, and so that would be 18 and a half. That's nine points. Of that is nine damage. And uh, he's nice. struggling to breathe if he breathes air. You have no idea if he does or not, but he does, well, definitely does not, not seem thrilled. That I could have him choking on <laughs> uh, the, This blast of water like torrents, and it's actually a few moments as it's just like, He's just getting fire hosed. Um, and, and after Mo, he's still there, drenched, but unmoving. And um, <laughs> just like uh, a good amount of water. He's just got a of, nosebleed. Yeah, for, <laughs> it's like a, a, a brief water bleed. And then from the mall, just <laughs> like a ton of water just like <laughs> uh, chokes up from this this weird mall. It is our one person's band's uh, turn, uh, Shervy. Oh boy. Uh so as as this goes out, she goes, uh, um uh please can I please have my flute back? And then she <laughs> will cast uh I will what was it called? Uh I will cast hypnotic pattern. Uh which uh you need to make a wisdom saving throw of uh 18. Uh Ooh. and essentially it creates you see her like uh, as she's saying that she's, she's just, it's almost a, a instinctual unconscious at this point. She, anytime she's nervous or fidgeting, you hear her like play her <laughs> instruments a little as it goes on. And while she's doing that, you see like almost musical notes fly out, multicolored hypnotic looking musical notes that just go out and start twirling around this, uh, this creature. And essentially what it should do is uh, if, if the, whoever sees, oh, before she does it, she looks at everybody and goes, uh, I probably should. You guys should close your eyes, okay? Uh, and <laughs> anybody who sees this uh, needs to make the wisdom saving throw. And on a failed save, the creature becomes charmed for a duration. And while charmed, the creature is, the creature is incapacitated and at the speed of you. All right. So uh, this like, this blast of colored musical notes sort of flies forward, just like this guitar hero kind of concophony. <laughs> The creature, this eldritch lich, available for free from the monstrous compendium spelljammer creatures available now on dndbeyond.com. Uh, like it, it like kind of like struggles for a minute as the, the musical notes start to like absorb in it, and you see the color of the musical notes sort of like glowing uh, under its rib cage and in places where the bones are exposed and stuff like that. And you can tell that it's struggling, mm. and uh, and I rolled an eight, which is a failure, but then. And double checked and this creature is immune to charm so there's oh. like this moment where you feel this connection this 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 you feel this vast dread and emptiness as your mind briefly connects uh with the lich and you get these flashes of uh of of space uh and this ship and just these like unknown horrors but uh just as the connection severs those those uh those leave you and you are back in the room uh you start to see this like glow in the the empty sockets that were its uh, its skullish eyes, uh, this glow of blue, um, and all of a sudden this uh, this lightning blast explodes uh, out of its eyes uh, towards uh, the the one that dared try to get into its head and dared try to uh, to charm it. Uh, so Shervy, I'm going to need you, my oh, friend, cool. uh, okay. to make a um uh a dexterity saving throw oh joy that's oh ooh, that's a good one okay. that is a 24. that very much saves uh so we are <laughs> going to um have that damage um oh, so let me roll up uh one two three four 4d6 of lightning damage uh, oh, blasting no. into Sherry. That's 14 oh. points of damage uh, as the, the pressure in the room once again changes and everybody feels like the hairs and stuff sort of picking up on the on the, on the backs of their necks. Uh, Varen sees all that is going on and <laughs> turns to this lich and says, we did not come here to join your legion and we will not do so without consent. And she um, kind of puts her arms and weapons behind her like an anime character and just like breathes out a thunderous energy in a uh, 15 foot cone towards this, this little lichy lich. Uh, I like to give them, you know, nicknames, kind of makes them yeah. less scary. 
like uh, it. I like it. What's the save? Fifteen dexterity. <laughs> Fifteen dex save. Let's make sure I'm on the right monster. Not that there are more. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. That was stupid. Ooh. Um. It's a 15. Oh, the, uh, and an eight is not a 15. So that eight does not save. Ooh, okay. <sighs> What's is... the damage there? Oh, it's only 10. But 10 is 10. 10 yeah. is 10. 10 is 10. That's 10. 10. 10 points of blast damage strike the lich. And it, uh, again, no emotions on its face or anything like that <laughs> because it's a skull. Um, mm. uh, but it also, you know, it doesn't really move. It just sort of turns its attention to you and, and regards you. Uh, and what else and would you like to do on your turn? Yeah, it's um 20 mm -hmm. feet away from us, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess I'll we'll have to get closer. Oh, wait, no. I could mm, throw a hand axe. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw a hand axe. I don't want to get close to it until I need to. So That's what throw... I do when I see a skeleton. Ooh. I mean, right? Like, I'm going to throw one of my hand axes. Ooh, 22. Ooh. Ooh. That hits. Roll damage. All right. Just imagine it like one of those bars that, that have the hand axe throwing places. You just yeah. like, yeah. get acquired. <laughs> <laughs> and she does it with those. one hand because she's cool. Ooh, uh, love it. Yeah. That's this eight axe. more damage. Eight points of damage. This at you, you, your axe uh, flies true and it embeds sort of in the corner of the maw. Uh, which does actually shriek independently <laughs> of uh, of the, the the lich's head, uh, and the tentacle uh, comes back out of the maw and grips the handle and just like pulls the the axe out of uh, of uh, the, the corner of of the mouth and uh, absorbs it um, with uh, I don't know weird little like lich juice kind of trickling out where the axe embedded <laughs> itself. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Neris is gonna. She's she's been around and she's seen a few things and she's has no idea what she's looking at. But it's like half tentacle and half skeleton. You said. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's about it. She's Ew. gonna call on the power of her god and she's gonna roll the dice and she's going to turn undead. I uh, uh, the lich rolled a ten. So uh, what is uh, the result of turning this oh undead? My oh my god! So now. Uh, a turned creature must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of me. It also can't take reactions. Uh, oh. For its actions, it can only use the dash action or try to escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. If there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dodge action, <laughs> and it lasts for one minute or until it takes damage. Uh, Incredible. Incredible. Uh, you feel this blast and like this again, another like shriek of frustration from the maw as the as uh, the, the lich real almost feels like it's hitting like this immovable glass. Uh, its tentacles uh, all start to writhe up and just like these masses of Arby's roast beef all twisted and piled amongst themselves, just like hitting this invisible like force field almost. Um, Bad image. Uh, oh, thank you. And then I do what I, I would can. Love to Summon but oh, not God. use my spiritual weapon, um, which is just a replica of my longsword in, in glowy space colors. Um, and then I would like to hide in a pew. Okay, so Pascal has sort of been hidden during all of this. Like she's watching all the action, but she's been sort of behind when she realizes it's her turn. She sort of steps from the back, like almost in slow motion, but she's doing it herself. Like it isn't, mm -hmm. she's actually walking in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah, brandishes yeah, yeah. her <laughs> Her like bedazzled shield and sword, and she's like category is glam death radiance, and she puts her sword toward the sky, and it starts to glow, and she says to the goddess of glitter and the priestess of battle, give me the strength of Mariah Carey, and she's like she's channeling divinity. Vow of Amity, which means I get advantage on all my attacks. And um, this is gonna be gonna be a divine smite as well, because her her sword is glowing with all of the energy of divinity. She's like, I saw what you said about me on Orkstagram. You ruined my business. It was you. I know it wasn't Narka all along. Okay, so let's go with this. She's going to step forward and swing her bedazzled sword at this thing. Roll oh to guys. hit. And I'm be gonna say to this. Be good to me. I'm going to let you roll with advantage because that was amazing. <laughs> so, so give me two attack rolls and give me the, the, the best of two. 
That's 22 to hit. Uh, get, uh, roll another one for me, just in case you get a crit. <gasps> you, you earned it. That was a very good monologue. That that made me yell for the pit crew, <laughs> just listening to 17. it. 17. 17. Everybody okay, monologue. So we'll... <laughs> Everybody monologue. Uh, yeah, right. It's like this little tiny <laughs> goblin. It's big as we throw it. Okay. Damn it. DM loves be... Mariah Carey references. <laughs> Note. And drag race references. Beautiful. Okay, so it's going to be 11 damage, but remember, I get, I think I get, I get 4d8 because of Divine, Divine Smite. So, right. so it's 11 yes, <laughs> plus. Oops. Okay, hold on. I'm messing it up. I'm embarrassing myself live. Never. <laughs> 11 plus 20 damage. That is 31 points of damage total. Yes. Um, you know? But, 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 even before old dude, old girl can react with the lightning in her eyes and her soaking wet gown, Pascal is going to turn her back dramatically as if she's going to walk away, but she's not. Oh. She's going to oh. turn around and like all the rhinestones on her cat suit are going to glow and she's going to say powerful things come in small packages and all this radiance is going to hit uh, uh, the, this monster for 10 more damage because of fury of the small. What would you like to do? So Ploppy is Ploppy is John McClaning underneath the pews. Perfect. <laughs> because he is heading towards Narlac. And <laughs> as he's heading towards Narlac, he looks to the side and a uh, a song appears in his head. And he summons some chaotic power as he heightens a spell and twins a spell, burning six sorcery points as he looks at uh, the, 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 the creature and he says, Lich, please, sh -sh 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 shatter. <laughs> and he casts a uh, shatter, but he casts it as a heightened spell and then twins it, aiming the first one at the noggin and the second one at the maw. So with the heightened spell, makes it do a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Incredible. But uh, we also have to roll on the ma wild magic surge table. But hope so you I'm have rolling that, at that save at disadvantage. Um, yep. And I'm going to assume uh, that a, uh, a nine does not uh, no, save. No, it don't. So let's uh, let's roll that. Uh, so that's six d eight damage. Just the second one. I got the wild magic table up. If you want to call out the results uh, on that, I will do that. Oh, for, yeah. on, on this one, the first the first one is thirty one points, but I twinned it. So the maw now is going to take a hit of. So, so the first 31 points, the second one is I need so many dice. 14 points. So all day that is 45 points of, uh, of, uh, let's see what kind of damage that is. Na, 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 na. That is, it's not telling me what kind of, shatter is, is it bludgeoning? What is that? Oh, it's a ringing noise. Painfully erupts from the. It does. Under damage of fail save. Inorganic material such as stone crystal. Anyway, I rocked, I rocked that Lich's world. Um, <laughs> yes. Lich, and, please, indeed. Uh, and I'm back. So, uh, so that's that. So now I got to roll on the wild magic table twice. So if you have that, mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to do the roll? So that would be percentile. Let's roll that. So the first one is 79. <laughs> Tell us what we want, Amy. Your first wild magic. Now, is this the thing that happens or you're rolling to see if it's something happens? It's a wild happens? magic surge. It's a wild magic right. surge from uh, mm -hmm. tapping into my chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got some <laughs> illusory butterflies and flower petals fluttering in yep. the air within yep. 10 yep. feet of you for the next minute. Yep. Wow. yep. <laughs> so it's all, it goes all full Harley Quinn uh, on us. <laughs> Uh, and then the second one, here we go. Yeah. 
sh 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 shattered. And then that is six. And with a six, uh... Two more liches, <laughs> I think is that uh, one. Joe, yeah. a Modron, chosen and controlled by the DM, appears in an unoccupied space within five feet of you and then disappears one minute later. Very good. Oh, copy that. <laughs> <laughs> Done. So then, uh, so then with my other hand, uh, I am rifling through Narlax's pocket, looking for my two dollars! Amazing. Uh, so yeah, you had kind of crawled up and you're just like at his, uh, you're like at waist level with him. You're under the very first pew now. Uh, and I, I appreciate for one, uh, your focus on that $2. Uh, the lich actually like gets lifted off of its feet and it's blasted back, uh, against, um, uh, the, uh, the organ. And, uh, it looks down uh, and actually it's like arm has broken off from like the wrist up and it picks up its own arm and uses that to like wipe the uh, the blood off of its uh, own face. You know, like I like that, the fact it's... that it had a free hand to do that. Yeah, but, well, it's using a know, tentacle. It's using a tentacle. For style points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the dismembered arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's using a tentacle to do it. Uh, yeah. uh, and and uh, it just like... Uh, uh, shakes it off but clearly was not uh expecting uh this level of uh of uh of resistance from these uh these puny beings of of uh of Faerun. um uh and also um go ahead and uh will you roll a perception check for me just while we're here yes let's see here okay Oh, see, I'm, I'm I'm trying. Hang on, I'll just do it manually. So that would be. Uh, that's an eighteen all day. Okay, perfect. So like, uh, then you also take a moment, and uh, you uh, are digging through uh Narlax wrappings, his Noel Mummy Lord wrappings, and you find in your hand, uh, the the crisp feel of uh of that uh of that two dollars <laughs> so I, I grab that and then i mm -hmm. also grab the mm -hmm. flute yoink and i and i'm gonna Perfect. Uh, i'm gonna um, the idea is to start heading back once i have movement allowed to me but with that being said i'm gonna go and cast hold monster and you i believe needs to make a wisdom saving throw of 18 dc 18. An eight to uh, why aren't you wiser, Lich? That's weird. 21! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> oh, well, you, know, you, you, don't, you win some, you lose some, except one day you just don't win any. <laughs> Look, sometimes you hold the Lich and sometimes the Lich holds you. Um, <laughs> would you like to take any, uh, 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 any, any movement or do anything else with your turn? Uh, I think Hang I'm on. Uh -huh. I'm going to bend luck. <gasps> I'm gonna bend luck and roll a D4 to see if we can reduce that uh, reaction Ooh. and get that wild magic surge table ready. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we'll see, we'll see, ready? <laughs> okay. Oh, we did! We reduced it. So what's that, the effect of this for the people? That basically just, uh, it doesn't make it safe. <gasps> oh! Perfect. Ooh. Um, and now, so now we now we roll the wild magic surge. Not to steal your your thunder. Amazing. Oh no no. So one great. of my favorite things about the lich is uh, I'm going to read this and I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to do it because I love this idea. Uh, the lich also <laughs> has a legendary resistance for four times a day. If it fails a saving throw, it can just choose to succeed. This? But in this case, you you bent the luck. You you pulled it out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. The slitch is it's it's on its heels already, so I'm, I'm going to choose. Give us from the insults. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely demoralized. All right, so uh, so then uh, hold monster, absolutely takes the lich's turn. What is that save it needs to make every turn? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom, and what's it got to hit? Uh, eighteen. Oh, it didn't hit at that time. It hits a 15 yeah. there. So the Lich, you can tell, is like struggling uh, mightily against nope, nope, this spell. Nope, nope. Um, since it's paralyzed, I'm going to do Breath Weapon again because it'll auto-fail this deck save. 
And take full yes, damage. Will. Yes, it will. Roll damage. <laughs> I, I oh, hate all what? five of you. <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know what? Because uh, we cheered. It's because we cheered. Mm -hmm. oh, Aliza, Ali just, I want you to say the amount out loud. Just, I want you to, how much? How well, much I damage? rolled two D10s and I got two. <laughs> 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 very <my> coughs <laughs> we're speechless <laughs> yeah it's just like yeah exactly Ram goes to yep. do the breath weapon and just comes off as like a... <laughs> oh, yeah. excuse me there's a moment <laughs> there's a moment where you realize the rest of the party is kind of looking at you like uh, really sorry um, he reaches into our pouch and gives you like a water like like <laughs> thank you thank you hot okay. sauce and burps a little flame okay that's better <laughs> thank you uh and now i'm just gonna like charge this thing with my long sword and and take a yeah. swipe at it <laughs> Uh, I love it. Uh, perfect. Yeah, you uh, you cross that. It's about like it's about like fifteen feet. You cross it okay. with ease. Do I get advantage on this? Because it's because it's it's still and also because I feel bad for you for the two. That was very embarrassing. <laughs> Thank you. It was very yes. Baron is Baron like tries to be really cool and stoic, and that was just not the move. That was yeah. No. Yeah. 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 So yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. And you look good Go doing it. Hit. Thank you. That, Thank you. that 21 absolutely hits. 21. Go ahead and roll damage with that long sword. And then long sword. Oh, I'm using one hand, so. 11 damage. 11 That's damage, much better, better than two. Uh, much better, better, better than two. <laughs> um, uh, where do you stab the lich? This Ooh, is more just question, for me. question, because there's a maw. A maw. I'm going to stab it in the neck, first. though. Oh, awesome. So yeah, you like stab it directly through the neck. Uh, and the neck is just all like sort of um, uh, dusty uh, uh, fossilized sinew and bone. And you just like shove the sword straight through it and all these little like the bone is splintering off and you can see on the uh, on the inside, there's just like little smaller Eldritch tentacles that are just like shrieking almost like you discovered um, cockroaches when you turn on a light mm -hmm. and they're just like trying to scatter. <laughs> Um, uh, it Baron's looks awesome. Uh, Neris, uh, it is oh, your turn. I'm going to see, uh, I, I'm, tr I'm used to following Varen's lead and, and I trust her, but I'm going to see if on my way out the door, I can't just smack at it with a flame strike. I'm 90% sure is what I'm doing. Yes. Uh, and that <laughs> has a 60 foot range. So I would love for a vertical column of divine fire to roar down from the Ooh. heavens. Um, burn the remaining water into a cloud of horrifying steam, which hopefully hurts extra. Um, and I think I'm good because a 10-foot radius, Baron just backed away. Um, so I don't think anybody else is caught in this. It has to make a dexterity saving throw. Did you just say it automatically fails because it's paralyzed? Nice. Yeah. That oh, is the ruling. Miss? That is the ruling that we've given this. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, so I'm, that is the ruling I'll stick with. And I'm saving up my, with my, my, cool. my bardic inspiration for, for any occasion that I might need it. But I think for right now, I'm just going to do uh, 46 fire damage and 46 radiant damage. Holy crap. What? I like it. And go ahead and add what we'll call 1d6 of steam damage, because that was a good idea. <laughs> nice. Yes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right. 6, 7, 8, 9 d6. Mm -hmm. What? Five, six, what? Seven, eight. Nine, I think, did it say or? I think it said and. I'm going to double check because it seems too generous, but um, I creature takes fire damage and radiant damage on a failed yep. save. Dang. And stare. Oh, yeah. My new astral dice for 37 points, please. Oh, how is this thing still alive? Oh, fuck it. Book it. <laughs> <laughs> Has been holding out on us. Yeah. Well, Amy, <laughs> she heals. I don't have a catchphrase yet for this kind of instance. I, uh, <laughs> I've been workshopping one. Uh, but if you had the opportunity to decide how one would do this. Yes. How? I want it to look like the steam itself seems to consume the flesh and tentacles and bones of this creature as the fire roars down onto the water uh, and sort of from the outside in, the top and bottom and side. So the last thing you see is the maw itself seeming to dissolve into the cloud of steam around it as it then disperses and vanishes uh, and nothing remains of the Eldritch Lich. 
Wow. Oh. This group now perhaps lost in space uh, with, uh, but still eager to get their business back, um, <laughs> reunited uh, with their flutes, uh, still excited uh, to maybe find their families on this, this new plane uh, and go on uh, whatever new adventure uh, uh, is, is before them on this weird floating cathedral in space that's definitely not full of the rest of the monsters from the Monsters Compendium Volume 1 Spelljammer Creatures available now for free on dndbeyond.com. I think that's where we'll end uh, this very uh, ridiculous campaign. Thank, thank you guys so much for playing with me. This was super, super fun. Thank you all so, so much for playing. This was, uh, again, uh, super fun. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, and uh, uh, we really hope that you uh, you'll all get involved uh, with Jasper's Game Week, whether that's auctioning, uh, uh, or whether, whether it's bidding rather in the auction for a seat at the table, or donating during games uh, the week of May 9th uh, to uh, to contribute to the weirdness. If you're a fan of the Wild Magic Sorcery Table, I think you are going to be a big fan. Of, uh, of Jasper's Game Week. Uh, and then of course, uh, we'll have Jasper's Game Day uh, digital dice uh, available to purchase on d, &D Beyond uh, that week and moving forward, all proceeds uh, going to Jasper's Game Day. Uh, Pascal, uh, getting your business back, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on all the socials at Alicia Marie Body and uh, just doing a lot of creative things. Obviously, a lot of role play stuff. Um, Children of Verte on Demi Plane every Tuesday. And that's been a lot of fun, different, a lot of fun. Um, other than that, a lot of role playing stuff, a lot of creative stuff because I live in NDA land. I can't share it right now, but it's coming. So find me on socials. Come say hi. I don't bite hard. <laughs> Friendly bite. <laughs> uh, just an absolute pleasure to have you, seriously. Uh, Todd, where can people find you in the world? Uh, people can find me at uh, Todd Stashwick on the, uh, on the Twitter, uh, T Stashwick on the Instagram. You can watch me on 12 Monkeys on Hulu or on the live action Kim Possible on the Disney Channel. You can play a <laughs> video game I co-wrote in October called Forspoken. And then, like, uh, like Alicia, I got a big announcement coming up that I am NDA for that I can't wait to tell you nerds about. So uh, it's a it's a good one. It's a pinch me uh, and I'm excited about that. So thank Amazing. you. And then and, come and bid, bid for a, a seat at my table. And all those NDAs, all those good things completely deserved uh, for both of you. Completely deserved. Uh, Elisa Pearl, where can people find you online? Hey, uh, you can find me at Elisa Pearl on Twitter and Instagram, A-L-I-Z-A. And um, you can see me on a lot of uh, RPG live streams this Saturday, 12.30 p.m. Fractured Destiny um, on twitch.tv slash Kira858. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be in my actor form on NCIS LA for my first network <laughs> guest star role. Super excited. Um, that, that's not it. And then on Monday, that, yeah, now I can, I can finally tell people. Uh, and, <laughs> and then on Monday, I'm guesting on Kolak over on uh, Fear HQ slash Hyper RPG uh and uh, yeah i think that's that's where you can find me this coming week i think i have some other stuff but just follow me on on twitter and instagram and i i tweet about all these things Please, pearl not busy in the slightest in the slightest yeah. oh i forgot yeah dnt beyond on wednesday <laughs> that, that was like this week <laughs> oh my gosh Next week. yeah yeah dnt beyond then... we're playing Call of <laughs> so, yeah, that's it <laughs> <laughs> and KP, such a pleasure having you and uh, uh, just Thank being you. able to, to, to see your face. Where can people find you online? <laughs> um, I'm, you can find me pretty much also all on, on all socials. Uh, primarily live as unhealthy as it is on Twitter. So just follow me at KP11 Studios, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and yeah, I, I do a lot of multiple things, primarily known for my photography. I do cosplay slash portrait uh, photography. Um, on top of that, I get to play at tables with wonderful folks like these folks right here. Uh, I'm in a couple of campaigns. If any of these sound interesting to you, uh, today is actually our season and story arc finale on Unmade Gaming's channel for a, our game called Void, which is a Coriolis campaign. So you, the thought of uh, Arabic Nights in space interests you at all? That's what that is. Uh, it's oh. a, lot of, a lot of fun stuff and cool things. Uh, Fridays, I'm on uh, Academic Foxhole or Two Press JP, as, as he also is known. 
uh, on our show called City of Light and Shadows, which is a fate light campaign where we are a bunch of, uh, it's an alt history where we're a bunch of SOE trained British operatives in Nazi occupied France. And as I like to say, I get to kick Nazi ass every Friday. And if that interests you, come check us out there. Uh, and then, of course, the big thing next week, I'll be playing God for Jasper's Game Day. So come join us. Uh, and uh, you know, if any of that interests you, please, please, please support this uh, fantastic stuff. I also do cultural consultation, cultural reading, writing, uh, just just too many things, and none of which I'm great <laughs> at, but I still do because I enjoy it. And that's what really matters. So do that. Right. And, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely great at all of them. We will give you your flowers if you won't. Uh, I'm Joe Starr. Uh, I will let my uh, my better half here at the Indie Beyond, Amy Dallin, take us out. Hey, yeah. Amy Dallin. You can find him at J Jstar187. Have I finally learned your at? I don't know. Um, it's one of those. I'm at Enthusiami everywhere. We love talking D and D, playing D and D, and getting our friends together. Especially when we get a chance to do some good, like we're going to get to do with Jasper's Game Week this year. So thank you all who are already bidding. Thank you everyone who's going to help tune in and spread the word and celebrate as we try to put a big dent in those goals uh, and help Jasper's Game Day with their mission, which is very dear to us. You can check out. We still might have a sale going on, depending on when you're watching this. It lasts until May 1st. It applies to Spelljammer, Adventures in Space, and some other rad pre-orders we've got going. Our Nether Deep campaign is going on Wednesdays, and we have loved having you all with us so much. We will see you next time. <laughs> see you next time. Beyond. See you, Jaffers. Thank you.